Hi guys, hope you all had a good Christmas and New Year. I didn't, I was ill in bed with flu throughout the whole lot, went to bed on Christmas Eve and didn't get up till New Year's Day. So I missed the lot, but never mind, I'm back at it now. And I've got a little job to do. I need some rings, uh, just to go in the end of these bits of chain. I'm gonna cut these up into, or open them up into little short bits, put a ring in, and then weld it to a job. I could just weld the, the end of the chain, but it just looks much nicer and neater if it's got a, a little ring on the end. Uh, I've got quite a lot to do, so I decided to make a little jig. So, as you all know, I usually use scrap for most of my jobs, if I can. So let's have a little look around the workshop and see what we can find. That'll do for starters, bit of 10mm round. Have a little look around and see what else we can find. I know what we want. Whether we can find it or not, let's look in the saw. There's usually some bits of rubbish in there. Yep, that looks like a candidate. Yep, bit of 3 8 gas. That'll do. Covered in oil and muck, but that'll clean up. That'll be fine. Now I know what else I've got. I've just put it in the scrap bin, so I know that'll be there. Bit of angle iron. I cut up an old frame that I had an old welder on, I sold on eBay. Uh, he didn't, the bloke didn't want the frame, so I cut it up. Which one will do? That one, I think. Yeah, just cut a piece out of that. Should do the job nicely. Right, let's go over to the saw. There's a job I'm on at the moment, another park bench, which got put on hold when I got ill just before Christmas. I have to get that going again. Um, right, what else? A bit of handle we need. So this bit of got rough old bit of half inch square I've been using for demos and things. That'll do a treat. So that's just about all I need, I think. So I'll get the old saw set up. And we'll cut it all up. I'll cut the angle up first, I think. Open her up. There's so many different ways of holding this angle. Some people hold it across the, the face, some hold it with the big bit towards me. Bit noisy. does the job pretty quick this tool. I'm not going to measure this because it doesn't really matter what size I have, it's roughly sort of six, seven inches, something like that, just to hold in the vise. I really ought to uh, bolt this saw down one of these days, it rocks around a tree. That'll do the job, so that's the bit we want. That bit goes straight back in the scrap. Now we'll cut this bit of 10 mil round. I just want a little bit off the end of this because it's, well it'll become apparent what it's for. It's, we'll go on to the bit of tube I found. I'll explain it as I go. I only want about 30 mil, something like that, inch and a quarter off the end. So that's those bits. What else do we need? Oh yeah, the uh, handle. We'll just cut the rough end off of this. I think this bit of half inch square must have been kicking around the workshop for donkey's years. It's so rusty. And again, it doesn't really matter how long. Just guessing. And that's it. So we've gathered basically all we need. Gonna start putting it together. Right, so I'm just going to clean up the ends, take off a few burrs. I'm just trying out one of these new ceramic discs. Um, I use flat discs a hell of a lot. And uh, I saw these ceramic ones advertised. And they're a lot more expensive, but they're supposed to be uh, last a lot longer. So this is the first one I've started using, so we'll give it a go and see how long it lasts. 
doing all right so far. I've, I've had it on a few days. I suppose it's like anything, as long as you don't abuse them. Um, doing things they're not supposed to or things that are going to damage them much quicker. All right, so let's just take the burrs off most of the stuff. That's going to be held in the vise. Doesn't matter which way around. And then that bit of bright 10 mil is going to be welded on the top. The bit of tube is going to have that little lug or little bit I cut off the 30 mil welded on the side, hanging down. But I'm going to put a bit of welding rod or something in there to give a bit of a gap. And then that handle just welded on the top of the tube. That's essentially it. But first, I've got to put a little hole in here um, to hold the the rod. So I'm just going to whip over to the saw and do that. No, not the saw, the drill even. Right, so I've just put the hole in there. It's about, pff, I don't know, 3 16 something like that. That's just to hold the rod when you start twisting it. And that has got to be welded on there. So let's get the welder going. We can start whacking it together. Right, you can see if this will focus that I've just tacked that on there with a bit of eighth welding rod underneath. It's just to give a bit of space, a bit of clearance when you're twisting your bar or winding it. Just want a little bit of clearance here so it doesn't bind. If it's too tight, you'll find it will bind and it will sort of damage the, the rod that you're trying to twist. So a nice little bit of clearance because you've got the, the thickness of the wall of the tube anyway, but just another eighth just helps out. So I'm just going to weld that up first. Sorry about the uh, light quality in here today. It's really dark outside. And although I've got a full open door, it's just not getting much light as it should. Clean the old welding screen out, full of grinding rubbish. Let's just give this a bit of a blast. This is actually turned down quite low, this uh, welder at the moment. I was doing a job welding up lots of eighth plate so it's quite low so that should be just about right there we go let's see I'll just a bit of focus that's this light again let's see I've filled up the gap just welded it on nicely nice and I say nicely good and firm put it that way I'm going to put the handle on the top while we're on this bit. Now that's going to just sit on there. I'm not going to bother measuring it. I'm just going to do find the centre on my finger and that's good enough for me. Tack that on there. Got it. Find my welding screen wherever I put it. Tap that on. I'm not taking too much, paying too much attention to get everything spot on because this this jig's going to be used and quite likely thrown away if I don't. I won't, might not have another job for it. So if it doesn't get chucked in the corner somewhere, it gets thrown away, and I'll just make another one when I don't need another job. So I'm not being too fussy. Obviously, you can go as fussy as you like if you're going to keep it and use it a lot. Right, got the angle. That's going to go on there. I think what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to drill a hole in the bottom of this angle, or in the top of the angle, so I can weld this from underneath so it's nice and flush on top. So I'm just going to quickly whip over to the drill, stick a 10mm hole in that. Right, done that. And it's, again, there's no specific distance how far that hole has to be. Because the other hole's just literally to hold the, the rod, the wire. 
So as long as you've got a bit of clearance away from your bit of bar, it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's welded in there. So I think we're almost set to go. Now, I haven't got any wire, so I'm going to use a welding rod. I actually use welding rods for loads of things for making stuff. This one, I have no idea what it is. It's got nothing written on it. But the beauty of them is, if, as long as they keep their coating on, they don't go rusty. So you can stick them virtually anywhere. And when you need a bit of rod, just whack off the, the flux. And Bob's your uncle. You've got a nice what, 15 inch lump of of wire. Just get the worst of the, or the rest of the coating off with the, with the rasp. Give it a quick rub. And that's it. You've got yourself a bit of wire. I make all sorts of stuff out of welding rods. But that's another story. Right, before we start, stick it in the vise and just knock around about three eighths of an inch on the end just to go down through the hole in the angle. It's just to locate it. So, stick the angle up. You can see now what the hole's for, just to hold it all in place. And you just drop the tube over the top I think you can all see where, where this is going. And just gently start it off by pulling it with your hand till it gets going. Bring it round and lift it up so it comes over the, the bit that's down through the hole. Then you'll have to probably have to lift your jig up a little bit just till it passes that first bit. And then you can let go and concentrate on winding because it will just follow itself along. And as you go, it lifts the tool up so obviously if you've got a longer bit of wire you just keep going and keep going and keep going till you get to the end you could put a bit of grease on there to stop it uh, marking the uh, the ring it's got stuck under there I've just got to give it a tap get it up yeah just to stop it marking the rings put a little bit of grease or something on there but I didn't bother and there you go so camera will focus Nice lot of uniform little rings. I've just got to cut down the middle of them, split them, just stick them in the vise. You might need to play about positioning these because obviously, as it's a spiral, it's not going to sit exactly right, and you don't want it sort of fighting itself because when you cut it they'll fly everywhere. Anyway you could do this with a hacksaw but of course I like the uh, easy ropes so I'm doing it with a grinder but you have to be very careful just go very steady don't put too much pressure on just let it really gently find its way through. As I say these are if, the, if it's under a, an odd sort of pressure in the vise, it will catch up once it's gone through one and bang the whole lot will be all over the floor and you'll never find half of them. And that went through nicely. And just whip them out the vise. And there you go, handful of out, 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 very, very hot rings. So there we go. A load of rings. I don't know how many's there. That one, your starting one, you can sling that. And as you can see, they're obviously offset. And that's easy enough to, to correct. I'm just sticking them in the vise, pulling them across with a pair of pliers. I'll just show you quickly how to do that. Although, as I say, it's pretty obvious. I, I make curtain rings, so they're quite big ones, and then I pull these across 
pull them across like that. And you can leave it like that. For these I will leave them like that because I shall weld through that hole. But you can, which is what I do with the curtain rings, just gently close them up so that the, uh, the join is much closer. And there you go. Nice closed up little ring which you can use for all sorts of things. Limited to your imagination, as usual. But what I do with these, I could open up this, the, uh, these links on the chain because they're split. But if you're using ordinary chain that's welded up, you can just open the link up a little bit further, close it across. As I say, don't bother to close them, the link up because this gap will get welded onto whatever you're going to weld it onto. This is just an example. You'll stick it on something like that, you weld across the gap, you'll never see it. Sorry about this, it's really bad light in here, it just won't focus. Damn thing. I want to get some studio lights in here for when I'm filming. But I think you get the idea. In fact, probably the easiest way, if I just stick the welder back on and give it a little demo, just quickly show you. So, stick your bit, whatever it is, that isn't what I'm using them for, but this will do is to just show you. I've got the chain caught. Just hold it on, give it a quick tack, and hold your chain out of the way. If I can find my screen again. Just hold your chain out of the way, fill up that gap, turn it round, fill up the gap the other side. And obviously, I didn't plan this very well. Just a quick demo so the rings not up the middle. Tap with a hammer will sort that out. There you go. Let's see if it'll focus now. There you can see, get the idea. That gap's completely gone and your ring's secure. And I just think it looks on some jobs, I'm you know, doing jobs for other people, just looks a little neater, a little bit more professional and just welding the chain straight on. So just to recap, that's all it is. Very simple, a bit of angle, a bit of bar, a bit of tube that slips over your bar. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. Nice little ring maker. It doesn't have to be that size, you can make whatever size you like. I've got this one, this is the one I make my um, curtain rings with. I was talking about earlier. This is a, I think, I'm not sure if that's inch and a quarter or inch, yeah, I think it's inch and a quarter gas barrel. So it produces quite much bigger ones. I put it in the vise and spin it this way. And the, the bar goes under that rod. Um, but do it slightly differently. I actually hold, I hold the thing in the vise and weld the rod to the, to the big bit of bar, the bit that spins, and then just turn it by hand and it uh, produces some nice curtain rings. I buy a, a full length of bar for that and you can get sort of 20 or 30 rings out of a, a length. Um, so that produces some nice rings and then I close them up and put a little um, half inch spring washer on for the curtain hook to, to actually fit through. There you go. This did have uh, two handles but I cut that off because I needed a bit of uh, bar for something else or another job. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.